these bearings here, you have to have a blind bearing puller because they will only go in. What's up guys, hope everybody's doing well. I am super excited to bring another video out to you guys. This will be part four of the KTM 125SX engine build. Uh, I've, been, I've been having a lot of fun riding and doing other things so I haven't really been able to get on this motor. But um, we are going to take the bearings out and I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do that. And uh, um, it's, it's a fairly easy process but there's a couple different methods we can use and uh, we're gonna knock it out and get it, uh, get it done real quick. But first, to my new subscribers, thanks for following. I'm pumped to have you. The channel seems to be growing pretty quick. I know I keep saying that, but um, I'm super excited. Uh, I love it when you guys share and help me out, and uh, it's it's super motivating. Um, I you know I do this for you guys, and it, it's fun. It's really fun. It's really fun to document everything that I'm doing. So um, yeah, please share share uh, with your friends and share with everybody out there and. Uh, Helps me out a lot. I'm super pumped. All right, guys, let's hop into today's video. Uh, case halves. We've got a, our left side case half here, our right side here, which is also our clutch side. Um, we're going to remove the bearings. As you can see, I've got the main bearing out here. I've got both the transmission bearings and the shift bearing out. And that's pretty much all that was on this side. Now, I'm going to show you a couple methods to remove bearings. Um, I do not have a shop press, so I cannot show you that method, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, you just um, press the bearing out of the case, so um, using a hydraulic press. So that's super easy. You could buy those presses at like Harbor Freight or whatever. Um, the methods I will show you are heating up the case and tapping the bearing out. That's one method. Um, these bearings here, you have to have a blind bearing puller because they will only go in and come out the same direction. So they will not go all the way through the case um, and they are a little more difficult to remove, but they're not bad. They're really not bad either way. Um, and then the other method is basically putting this whole thing in the oven and uh, letting the aluminum expand and the steel expand and the bearing fall out. So this is how, this is how thermal expansion works. Um, Aluminum will expand about, I can't remember that exact number, but it's like, it's like two times the amount that steel will at the same temperature. So what that means is, if I take this ambient case, which is about right now about 75 degrees outside, I put it in the oven at 300 degrees. By the time the case reaches 300 degrees and the bearing reaches 300 degrees, the case will have expanded two times the amount of the steel. So um, if the steel only expands 1,000, then the aluminum will have expanded uh, two thousandths. So it's it's super cool, super cool the way metallurgy works and things like that, and the uh, you know the uh, thermal coefficient of the two different metals. So basically, what we're going to do is throw this in the oven at three hundred degrees, and most of the time these bearings will just drop right out. It's it's super cool, super easy. So I'm going to show you a couple methods. Blind bearing puller probably on this one here. Um, I have to look on the other side. Yes may tap it out um, but you guys should have everything you need at home to remove bearings um, fairly easily there are some specialty tools such as that blind bearing puller, puller that is uh, necessary but um, you guys can do this you really can so um, let me go heat the oven up uh, I'll get it going and in the meantime what we'll do is we'll actually heat up the case and we'll drop a bearing out and I'll show you the easy way to do that Okay, now for doing this, to heat the case up, we need a couple things. You can use a heat gun, but it takes a lot longer to do. If you absolutely do not have this stuff, you can use a heat gun. Um, I'm using just a propane torch. A MAP torch works quicker because it gets a lot hotter than the propane. And then I'm also using my seal driver set. I have two or three sets of these. Um, and basically what that's going to do is we're actually going to we're going to work on this bearing right here. Um, and what we're going to do is find the right size of seal driver that will knock that bearing out. That, that one looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and use that one. And what we're going to do here, the method behind this, is to heat up the outside of the case where the bearing race sits inside. So you want to you want to heat up that outside of the housing there. And what that's going to do is that's going to expand the aluminum and the bearing won't get as hot because you're heating up the outside. So the bearing shouldn't expand too much, but the aluminum will 
and the bearing will be able to fall out very, very easily. So you want to be careful. You want to make sure you're going the right direction with it. Um, the easy way to tell is like this bearing right here goes through the case completely. This one does not. It stops on that lip. So if I flip this over, you can see the rest of the bearing there. So obviously we're going to drive it down this way. This one will probably fall out with the oven trick, but I'm going to do this just to show you guys uh, how it works. Super, super simple. So let's get our propane torch. Let's heat this up and let's go ahead and knock that thing out. Okay, and there you go, you saw that. Literally took two hits, bearing fell out, we're golden. So that's one method of getting the bearing out. And yeah, see the case is very, very hot over here. It does not take much to get that out. I could probably knock this one out too. Um, we'll give it a shot here. I didn't really heat up around it, but eh, it's pretty warm. We'll see, we'll see if it comes out. We'll give her, give her the old college try anyway. We'll see if it, see if it wants to fall out. Oh yeah, see that? So right there, I just got two bearings um, with my uh, seal driver. And uh, while we're at it, we'll see if this one will fall out also. Um, really, really wasn't gonna do all these bearings, but they are coming out so easy. There's another one. And there is three bearings, just like that. So it goes to show when you heat up the case, um, that aluminum expands a lot more, a lot more than the steel. It's, it makes it very, very nice. So uh, over here, I'm not hot. I can obviously touch this. So this is not ready to remove the main bearing, neither of these. So I'm gonna save these for the oven and uh, I'll show you the blind bearing puller once I get the case hot and uh, um, we'll go from there. Hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. All right, got my seal driver here. I'm just gonna give it a couple of good taps and see if it pops right out. Okay, there it is, not too bad. Now while it's warm, I'm gonna get my blind bearing puller and try to get these babies out right here. Okay guys, so here I have my blind bearing puller here. This is a Tusk kit, as you can see there. Awesome kit, I've used it quite a few times. I really do like it a lot. Um, so we're gonna use this little guy, I've actually never used the little guy before, on these smaller bearings. And the way this kit works is you, you put this insert into here. Hold on, let me get it in there. And then when you tighten this up, it expands the tool and then it grips the bearing and then you use a slide hammer and you slide hammer the uh the bearing out works pretty pretty sweet pretty nifty little unit there so i will go ahead and set this up and show you guys how it works okay so i got my tool in there i'm just going to line it up nice and i'm going to tighten this down and this will expand the jaws of the bearing puller and it really doesn't need to be tight. Just just snug it up so it doesn't want to uh, come loose when you start using the slide hammer. So about right there. And I'm gonna take my slide hammer piece, thread it in the top, and we can start um, giving her the berries and hopefully the bearing just pops right out. These little bearings are very easy. When you start doing the larger bearings, it gets a little bit tougher, but it's still not bad. It's still not bad at all. So, okay, now I'm just I'm just gonna slide it and uh, pop this bearing out. There it is, one hit wonder. So that one's done. Now I'm just gonna loosen it up, do the other one, and pop it out. Boom, baby. All right, guys. So the last bearing that we have to get out is going to be focus camera. There we go. This guy right here, and that is where the shift linkage travels through the case. Um, 
And the, these bearings are the hardest bearings to get out of all of the case bearings. Um, the reason being is they have a they have a thin wall, um, so they don't expand and contract very very much, and um, they're really really snug fit. Most of the time, I have to press these bearings into the cases um, to get them to seat. You can't do the uh, um, the dry ice or freeze method and drop them in just because they're so small. The expansion and contraction of them is not enough to to make a huge difference. So um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to drive this thing out. Um, it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's it's going to be a pretty decent drive to get it out. So I'm going to use a socket and a extension because that is a little more solid than my seal driver kit and uh, knock this baby out. There it is. All right, we've got all our bearings out. I'm super pumped. That is a big milestone on the engine. Our engine now is 100% tore apart. Uh, well, I say that. Uh, clutch side cover right here. We got to rebuild the water pump in it. Um, so I think we'll do that next video. We'll get the water pump rebuilt. Um, well, actually, we can't do that because I have to get this thing stripped and prepped for Cerakote. So we can't do that quite yet. But we are shipping our parts off this week to Josh um, to Vapor Hone and prep these parts for Cerakote. So um, I think we're gonna move on to the wheels. I gotta get them apart so I can get them powder coated and uh, ready to be laced back up together. I can't find, Rocky Mountain does not carry any wheel sets right now or spoken rim kits. Um, I don't want to pay a bunch of money for some other high dollar uh, companies. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to get the hubs stripped and powder coated and same with the wheels. And then we're going to throw them spokes back on, clean them up, make them look good, throw those spokes back on. And uh, along with the frame, it's getting powder coated and the triple clamps, they're getting powder coated. So we're moving right along. Um, engines tore apart. Next, uh, next thing to do on the engine really is to get these, all these new bearings put back in and, uh, once we get that side, um, the water pump rebuilt and this Cerakoted, then we can start putting the entire engine back together. All right, guys, that's all there is to removing bearings. Um, super simple process. Takes a couple tools, but you can do it. You can do it. And uh, yeah, now we're ready to move on to uh, the next step in the build. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you in the next one.